Hi, I'm Lisa Mitchell and you're watching Noise 11. Welcome to Noise 11. We are here with the very zen Lisa Mitchell. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. You are zen? Good to be here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, you've got everything out <clears throat> in this new album, second album, Bless mm. This Mess. Uh, I like the title, this whole idea about Thank you. embracing sloppiness and messiness and indecision yeah. and all that sort of thing. It, did you come up with this title after you write, wrote the songs and saw a little bit of a theme going on? Um, actually, no. I kind of came across that term a couple of years ago and it just really stuck out to me. And I kind of forgot, well, I forgot about it. I was like, oh, how did I forget about this amazing old generic term that everyone has locked in their brain? Um, and it has such truth. Bless this mass. It's, it's such, um, I don't know, like grandmother truth, you know. Like, So I guess, um, yeah, for me, it, it's, it's all about embracing your mess and you know, the ups and downs, and um, I think, um, yeah, there's real, like, uh, there's real power, and um, I don't know, I think confidence that comes when you're just like, yeah, my life is really messy and crazy, but it's just how it is, you know. Mm, it's an acceptance thing. Mm. There's a lot of spiritual zenness in this, in, not least for the spirit of CP that came before this. Uh, <clears throat> I feel like there's bigger ambitions on this record. Is there? Especially, I mean, musically at least. Let's okay. put the lyrics aside for a second. Yep. Musically, there seems to be uh, going out in little movements, which mm. I didn't really feel like Wonder was more of a, of a piece. Uh, how did right. the songs come to you? Even, the, even the, the fact that there's two songs which are on the Spirit of CP, which are on the album now. I mean, how do you feel about sort of putting them together? Was it all in a big heap and you just arranged the songs? Um... Yeah, well, we kind of had a good, mm, like, 16 to 20 songs that we were kind of dealing with. Um, and, yeah, the Spiritus EP came out, um, must have been a couple, mm, nearly June, like... June, I think. Yeah, like, like a fair yeah. few months ago now. And that was kind of, like, as a way of putting out a single before the album came out. And then we kind of pimped it into an EP with these little acoustic songs that I loved and I felt, were, well, it was really important for them to be out there, but I didn't really feel like they would make the album as such. Um, so, yeah, so I... Uh, but then we whittled down the rest of the songs into the album and... I found that that process was very late in the game. I was literally holding on to all my little babies and, like, didn't want them to, like, you know, let them go. And then I kind of... Well, I just think You keep on saying we. Who's helping you out here? We. Um, I guess I'm talking about Dan Hume, who produced right. it. And, um, yeah, I guess uh, he's always been a really big chunk of my musical kind of world. Um, we've worked together a lot in the past on... Um, yeah, my two kind of early EPs and then the last record as well. So, so yeah, it's been good working with him again. Yeah, um, but all of these songs are self-penned as well, I mm. noticed. You had, uh, you worked with a lot of other people on the first record, but... Yeah, a few. Oh, well, <clears throat> a handful, a couple on a few of the songs. Yeah. But this time it was all you, though. Mm. And But it was Dan around sort of when the songwriting was happening as well and chipping in? Um, yeah, so I kind of, I usually come to the studio with everything kind of finished. Well, in my brain, I think it's finished. And then we start playing with it again and re recording it. And I feel like that's just the beginning again. So at that point, <clears throat> yeah, little lyrics kind of come into questioning and um, chord changes. And I find Dan, for example, is someone I totally trust in that kind of space. And I feel like... I respect him so much as a songwriter um, that, yeah, that I feel like I really want to know what he thinks about these little things that I'm not sure about. Or, And it's quite often that he will be like, oh, my gosh, Lisa, I hear this thing. Like, and you'll go over the piano and kind of play this little melody out. And, and then we're like, yes, that's it. That's what we're missing. <laughs> so, yeah, we kind of both just really kind of let go in that kind of area. Mm. That's cute. We had... Uh, John and Peter from Evermore talking about uh, the studios that you worked in as yeah, well, the Stable Staples. Studios, and they said that you deserved an award for the person who put up with the most. They've recorded people there, 
but you were working when they were drilling holes in walls and putting things together. <laughs> was it really like you had to stop? And Sometimes. Oh, <laughs> well, we, we would just be like, okay, Dan would just be like, so Lise, we probably shouldn't go out the studio today. There's uh, drills and bulldozers and stuff. And <laughs> so we'd be like, okay, we'll just um, just have really long brunch sessions. And oh, it sounds so tough. Just, I know, really tough. <laughs> so no, it was actually really... It's actually really, I mean, the stables, it's come such a long way. Like I remember recording um, like a lot of my first album, Wonder, there, when it was literally a skeleton of what it is now. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I remember looking up and just seeing all the like, uh, what do you call it, the uh, insulation, just like bare on the roof because they were still in such early stages of making it. Um, and now it's so beautiful. It's like got beautiful like um, dark blue velvet walls and Ooh. just, yeah, beautiful grand pianos and it's oh, yeah. really amazing. I feel like it's going to be kind of one of those real, like, iconic kind of Australian studios. So. You saw it happen, which is good. I know. Yeah. I've got photos. Yeah. <laughs> Overall this time, of course, I have been looking through the lyrics and I'm not clever enough to be able to pick these things. So I'm glad that amongst all the minor scrub-outs, mm -hmm. just as a, as a bit of a cheeky mess <laughs> reference, you've actually allotted... Uh, <coughs> or sort of annotated the lyrics that you've taken from, or borrowed as you write, from other points, uh, from mm. Khalil Gibran, uh, from Little Prince, which I have sitting on my shelf, and my sister gave it to me, and I never Isn't bothered it to read great? it. <laughs> no, you look at me going, it's like, I know, it's like 50 pages long or something, I've never bothered to read it. So maybe I will. There's Tolkien in here. I heard that you actually have, you buy a bunch of copies of Little Prince and hand them out to people. Yeah, I find, I don't know about you, but I just have some books that I'm, I've, they've affected me so much that I just feel like I have to give to other people. And um, Claire Bowditch actually gave me The Little Prince. Oh, no, she didn't give it to me, but she told me to read it. I remember she wrote me a letter when I was, like, 16, when I was living in the Idol House. Wow. Um, so full on, and that just changed my life. I remember just being, like, this little kid in the candy store, and I was like, oh, my gosh, Claire about it. She just wrote me a letter. Did you write it off the bat, just off mm. out of nowhere? Well, I, I sang a song, uh, um, a Neil um, Finn song. Um, well, I'm not sure if it was Neil or Tim that wrote it, but Follow Your Feet. Um, and it was very influenced by a version that she had done, and her little nieces, I think, were like, Claire, you've got to watch this girl on the TV. And... Um, and so then, yeah, so that's how she kind of saw me and wrote me a letter. And I remember her writing, um, have you read The Little Prince and Carl Gibran's The Prophet? And so I was like, oh, go. went down to the bookstore and bought them. And yeah, really and This beautiful. is coming full circle. You're recommending it to other people totally. via the book. Oh, so many full circle things are happening. Claire is on it. Claire's on it. Isn't that great? Yeah. It's a really amazing full circle. And this is effectively, <laughs> I don't know, there's a couple <clears throat> of songs on here which have got a real George Harrison vibe. And yeah. I noticed, was this before or after you saw that doco? I think it, uh, oh, I think I wrote the song before, but then um, I think the rest of pr the production happened after I saw that. But yeah. um, I saw, uh, sorry, I was reading um, a lot of Eckhart Tolle at the time when I wrote this song called The Present, which um, is quite Indian influenced. And yeah, we had like a little harmonium drone. That, that, it's this beautiful old Indian instrument that has like a little bellows at the back of it. And you can kind of do chanting along with it because it's literally just an, a constant drone. Um, so that's really nice just like to put under a track and then... Um, you chose a bit of sitter on it, isn't it? Bit of sitter, yeah. yeah we found uh, it's beautiful. We've got Jordan from Georgia Fair on that one yeah. as well. Yeah. And also, I mean, yeah. that song's the present, which is very much a uh, discrete individual song. But then the final mm. track on the album is this 10 minutes, again, like a big sort of trip out called I Know You're There Somewhere. And that was, again, I was hearing those sort of Eastern influences. Mm. It's pretty, you're pretty centred for such a young <laughs> one. What about you were doing yoga up, uh, up in... New York, and that's where yeah. you sort of got into the Eastern religion, yes? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I found um, it's, yeah, I find um, I find it really difficult to talk about, um, you know, like your personal spiritualities and philosophies, because everyone has such different ideas, and I think that's so cool. And um, But yeah, I think it's a really taboo um, topic, and so... Yeah, but I um, I really feel like uh, it's, you know, yoga's been something that is such a centering thing for me that I, yeah, I find it 
I have to talk about it. So, yeah, Do you think so, this is a good representation, <clears throat> really, about how you've been feeling? Mm, yeah. Definitely. I'm, I'm very much a kind of a documentary writer, so it's definitely just, um, yeah, real stuff. And, um, there, was, mm. there was a cute thing I've seen you were doing. You were asking fans to do doodles for a little pamphlet, mm. uh, which are going to be hanging on your tour. Mm. What's that been like? You've been collecting them. That must be an interesting insight into what your fans are thinking. Yeah, so that's been really cool. I mean, I find, um, I don't know about you, but I when I'm like on the phone or like, I don't know, just kind of staring off into space, I'll, I'll just be drawing and my hand will just be kind of going and I won't really be thinking about it. And then I kind of have a look what I'm, I've drawn and I'm like, oh my gosh, like what does that mean? Like, it's, you know, it's really spiky drawings or it's really like spiral kind of drawings. And I kind of feel like it's a bit like, dreams when you wake up in the morning and you're like what does that mean like surely that means something to do with my real life now so I find um yeah I just find I'm really fascinated by what people do like what the shapes they do and like what they think it means also they're off- offering interpretations as well um not really so you're just but, kind of, hmm. yeah I'm just kind of like hmm, <laughs> what's going on there <laughs> So, yes, yeah, so I'm making a little um, compilation of um, all these drawings that people are sending in to me and um, Instagramming me and tweeting me and, and uh, kind of going to make them into this little um, magazine that I'm just going to have for free at shows. So just in honour of, of the album, Bracing Your Mess. and um, Yeah, it's been a really fun little side project. Yeah, I think mm. that would be cool. All right, we will talk about uh, the tour because you're lining up. Um, Dan's going to be on the tour. Mm-hmm. Alpine's going to be on the tour. It's almost like a little stable, Absolutely. stable, stable, almost. Totally. So are you there all buddies kind of now? It's just going to be like, awesome, I get to go on a holiday with my friends and play, yeah? Yeah, totally. Oh, I'm really excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're all fantastic. Like, um, yeah, I mean, Alpine, Melbourne kids, and Dan, of course, lives here too. And um, Yeah, and it's, it's going to be really fun. They're all just really talented and... I kind of um, definitely going to be um, uh, convincing them to come on stage with me in some songs and lend me their skills. So, <laughs> cool. yeah. Oh, look, that sounds like a lot of fun. Finally, I want to ask. Um, just a couple of days ago, the AMP is coming around, <coughs> the Australian <coughs> Music Prize. You being a winner for the last record. Um, how do you look at that win? in the way that it might have shaped this album? Or is the win kind of a nice little thing which happened but it really didn't affect your work or your songwriting or anything? Mm. Well, I feel like with the amp, like it's um, it's such a cool thing, but it's also like any kind of, um, you know, like competition and art, they're just like chalk and cheese. They just don't go together. So it's kind of hilarious that that format is what it takes to kind of feel this community sense in the Australian industry and so in that sense it was so humbling and so kind of like a real pat on the back and a real um I don't know kind of like you know you're doing good kid kind of feeling from these older people in the industry and I mean um yeah I I was really really surprised and um it it really did it felt really good and um so yeah that was fantastic and but I mean in terms of how that affected my new record I I don't think it really affected the record as such I think it maybe helped me in some way in some kind of inner kind of confidence or feeling of like um uh I think feeling of uh just like faith I think that um coming from a reality TV show background that music can transcend stereotypes and that it still connects and I think that's so potent and um, that was really um, yeah I think that put a lot of faith in in well in what I think of the music industry and, and people in general so pretty mm. amazing that's mm. lovely you took the best opportunity or the best angle you could have taken on that one <laughs> cool <laughs> uh, look the album was really interesting um, and it, there's a lot more going on than I think maybe a lot of people might have thought. So I urge people to get right in there and uh, experience it. But thank you very much for coming in. Thank you.